Hello. I usually don't use the microphone because I'm pretty damn loud. But uh, I'm Griffin. I'm still doing cheap guitar repairs. Weather's changing. It screws up your neck on your guitar. Let me know. Email me at thekillertree at gmail.com. Also, next Monday, I'll be helping with this Monday night shows at Britannia. And I would like to book some bands. And uh, if you're pretty badass, let me know. And also, uh, Saturday night, if you know and can get in Snake and Jake's, I might be playing a show there with the Killer Tree. So, come on out. Right on. Great. Okay. Is that it? Good. All right. So, um, we have some very special guests this evening. Um, these guys are um, uh, very involved in the entrepreneurial aspect of the music industry in, in, in New Orleans. Um, Robert LeBlanc uh, is the owner of the Republic, your former, former Loyola student. Yep. Uh, and uh, Greg is uh, founder of Community Records. He's, uh, he uh, it promotes the Block Party Festival, and he's uh, the bass player in Fatter Than Albert. Um, most of you probably know Greg, right? Yes? OK. And uh, Jared Zeller <laughs> is the founder and executive director of Mothership Entertainment, Mothership Foundation. And he's the founder of the Bayou Boogaloo Festival. Um, he also teaches at Delgado. Kind of does what I do, in a way. But I'm not threatened by him in any way. <laughs> um, so uh, I guess what, um, what we're supposed to be doing here, what we're, what we're hoping to cover is, is the ways that, um, that being an entrepreneur in this city uh, are uh, the, the things that are changing about it and the, and, 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 um, the ways that, uh, that you have gone about it, you've gone about your own business, um, uh, in the context of what it might mean to the people in these seats. They are, um, in, in two of the three cases here, just like you were, and um, need, to, need to know what they're going to do when they're done here, or, or maybe while they're here. I mean, I, w I encourage everybody to start whatever it is they're going to do while they're here, while they have experts around, while they have uh, the lights on and the roof over their head, and, and, and while they can, they can get help that won't cost them any money. Um, so I guess I'll start, I'll start with Robert. Um, the first question that I wanted to run by you guys is, is uh, and, and we'll make a little uh, adjustment to the question in your case, Jared, but you know, how did your experience here at Loyola prepare you for what you do now? Uh, one of the, the, the main thing is I'm tremendously loyal to Loyola because I feel like everything that I have done, will do professionally has been a result of Loyola. And the main thing was the fact that everybody was so open, so open-minded. I was from a relatively small town in southwest Louisiana. Um, came to Loyola, tons of different people, really broadened my horizons. Um, I was an economic and finance major, so went into the music business from that angle. I didn't really study music. I was... Born to be a fan of music, not a musician. Yeah. And yeah. Terrible. But, Many um, worse places to get into the music business from than, than economics and finance. Yeah. But, um, but no, I think the, the well-rounded educational experience at Loyola that they, they force on you when you're younger, and then as you get into your upper classes, you start by choice taking classes. So I took acting classes. Again, I was terrible, but it was great to understand what it takes to become a performing artist. And, and um, I think that the... Um, just a well-rounded education and the belief, they genuinely believe that you can do anything that you want to do and, and I found that to be true. And it's pretty amazing from my, from my context, you know, from, from my standpoint, I'm not from New Orleans. I, I used to come here to work, uh, I, I mean, I've come here to work in the past and, and I came here to work here, but I can't get over the openness of the city of New Orleans. Not just the openness of the music scene and how supportive the scene is to, to, to new bands and to and to people who need gigs, but how supportive the city seems to be right now. Um, where and, and I would imagine that that plays into your into your experience as well. Absolutely. I mean, it started at Loyola, and then it and then it transferred over to the city to some degree in a sense that um, it's not a secret that with Republic and we still make a lot of mistakes at Republic. But when we started, we had no idea what we were doing whatsoever. We were just learning by trial and error, and we had a lot of people supporting us and kind of carrying us across the finish line, frankly. And right. that's, that's not a secret. I mean, that's pretty. Yeah. And some of you guys that still work with Republic know that we can be train wrecks sometimes. So. <laughs> yeah, we can um, all be train wrecks sometimes. <laughs> so, yeah, I think the city absolutely supports it. The other thing that I think is interesting, particularly with Loyola right now, is 
Um, you know, I started 10 years ago, and people didn't really understand where music was going or how to monetize music. That's when the record industry was kind of falling apart. People right. didn't really understand how to wrap their heads around. Yeah. And it seems like you guys at Loyola right now are really tapping into the vein on how to use music and to, um, and to be commercially viable with music, and that right. didn't exist. And I think Loyola is probably at the forefront of that. Right, I think we're all trying to make sure that we stay pragmatic and that it's not just theory, theory, theory right. and, and, and structure, 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 but that it's, it's all about how you're going to make money as an artist. What are you going to do? You know, what, what kind of revenue streams are available? What, right, and it sounds like such a dirty thing, but the reality of it is through the history of the world, yeah. art has always been subsidized by commerce in some respects. Absolutely. So it doesn't mean you have to be a complete sellout. And it's all about making millions and millions of dollars, but it does need to be financially sustainable for it to be viable. And some of you guys who are in bands and starting bands and, and hip hop groups, you guys understand that already, but you'll understand it to a larger degree. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Without money, art becomes demoralizing. And, and once you're demoralized, you stop making the art. You need to find some way to sustain yourself. And you don't have to make millions, as you said, you just have to make as much as a, a teacher or a plumber or. You know, so that you can a, a, a living, a yep. middle class living yep. is nice enough. So you can spend your time and energy pouring yourself into that craft yeah. and creating. Yeah. And, and that's what that's what I hope Loyola for. is good for. You know. Absolutely. Greg, how about you? You know, you're a more recent graduate. I mean, Correct, yeah. how did it set you up? Well, I feel like most basically Loyola has a tremendous amount of resources and I to the best of my ability, I used my years here to take advantage of as many of those as possible, I right, guess. Right. And I'm still taking advantage of it. I get free printing and yeah. you know, use the high speed internet when I have to. Yeah, yeah. And uh, oh, this is what we're saying. <laughs> take this crap. I use it while you've got it. I graduated yeah, it's, ten it's years ago and still use it. Yeah. And, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So. yeah, it's like you guys who are actually paying for it, it would be cool if you'd use it as much. It would be great. Um, yeah. sorry. But I mean most basically I uh, tried to pay attention to the people and the things around me and just see where I fit into those various nooks. And um, I don't know, the, the professors here really showed me a lot and gave me a lot of confidence in myself. I'd say it was around my, it was definitely the end of my uh, sophomore year. I realized like, all right, I got two years left. I better start making the best of this. And yeah. that's when I started asking professors for book recommendations and I started really exploring uh, things that interested me outside the classroom. Right. I mean, and I had, um, I don't know, Loyola in general and the city of New Orleans. I mean, I grew up around here and, and uh, I had a band going into college and like that's what I really wanted to do. Yeah. And I just followed that and like we did tours when we got the chance and we're still doing that. So basically, um, Loyola is like a great platform. Um, I think. To, um, it's incredibly comfortable, which is like, right. I think a curse and a blessing. Mm -hmm. Because if, uh, well, that's sort of the blessing and the curse of New Orleans. Right. To New Orleans bands. Is that it is, it is, first it's of all, a warm pretty, and welcoming. It's like yeah. a hot shower or something. Yeah, it's like you don't yeah. want to leave. Yeah, outside New Orleans is a cold, cruel world, you know? And like, and that's the other, the, the funny, that's why this place has such a strong gravitational field, I find. Like, it's very hard for bands to sort sure. of leave here and, go somewhere else and do, do more and bigger because it's, it's easy enough to do fine here. Right. I don't know yeah. if there's anything wrong with that necessarily, but, but yeah. that's a great point. I mean, but um, yeah, I mean, I'm still absorbing it all. I mean, I'm only graduated two years ago or less than that, so I'm still just trying to find my own way through. But like you said, um, I, I did try, I started the label before I graduated. I started it yeah. um, the beginning of my Senior year was when I started sketching out the idea and thinking about like, all right, this is what I want to do after I graduate and really looking at where I could take it. And the other resource is uh, college allows you a ton of free time. So uh, yeah. I remember spending as many Friday nights as I could, like going out and flyering and like, yeah. you know, not just, I don't know, trying to see where I could take those little pockets and like, use them to my advantage, like over Easter break, I'd book a tour as opposed yeah, to like yeah. go to Florida or something. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the, uh, these bands who yeah, there's take a off ton on of, spring I mean, break. It's, it's, in, it's incredible like how many people here are like really seeing what they want to do and then going after it. And yeah. I remember like, I guess when I first started the music industry program here, there weren't as many people doing that, but it seems like 
the majority of people that are here like really trying to listen to where their passion is and yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, so I mean it's, it's really important I think and, and I, 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 I say this frequently, you know, to use this place as kind of a runway, you know, just start it up, start rolling while you're here, take, take as much as you can from us, you know, use this place as a crutch and then by the time senior year comes, around, comes along, I mean, first of all, if you have a real application for all these classes you're taking, if when you're doing a marketing plan, you're doing it for a real enterprise that you really give a damn about, if when it's time to do your business plan or your strategic plan, when you do those things, you, it really matters. First of all, you make our jobs easier, but you also make it a lot easier for yourselves to get a ton done that's more, more productive because it matters. And the other benefit is that it sets up your endeavor to do better because you're actually doing the planning and the work in some real clear, meaningful way. So, so yeah. Well, that's that's one. I'm so glad you used you know that you brought that up. Absolutely. Jared, I know Loyola is not your alma mater. I I know that because I ask you. But. Uh, you know, I'd be interested in knowing kind of where, what you did school-wise that might have set you up for, for what you do now and, and sort of what, you know, what the, 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 the effect of this city and this community, including so many of these kids, has to do with what, what it is you do. Now. Uh, well, I'm, I'm a graduate of UNO, um, and I'm not sure, first of all, I want to say that you guys are in a, in a much better position than I was because music was not my background. Uh, it was a management major. Uh, so I guess in a sense, it, it set me up to, to be in this position to be managing a couple of different em enterprises. But, uh, but I wish I would have been in these seats th that you guys are in, and I wish that I would have been planning my business while I was in college. Right. Uh, I just happened to, to get my hands dirty, you know, the hard way. I learned the hard way. I just started spending money and flyering and just, you know, like as Robert alluded to, just made a ton of mistakes. So. Uh, I don't recommend that you do it the way I did it. <coughs> so you guys are much further ahead than I am. Um, uh, with that being said, I'd, I'd love to utilize Loyola at some point. Uh, right. I think I had some interns at some point from Loyola. I know I did. Uh, I teach at Delgado, so I, I get some, some support from Delgado. Um, but just I, I know I had a few Loyola interns, and they were just, you guys are great students. You've got a great program here. so. Uh, if anybody wants to, to help get involved with what I'm doing, uh, please please talk to me after this because I would love to utilize. Can you describe a little more about about your enterprise as well? And, sure. And, you know, we'll we'll go back down the line. You know, talking about what it is you do, what your day to day. You know, what your or, or let, let's not, not not necessarily day to day, but like an overview of what your of what your your enterprise is all about. Sure. I guess I got into the music business thinking that would be glamorous, and and that is so wrong. You know, I ended, I spend a lot of time fundraising. Yeah. You know, for what I do, I don't know if you guys know, but I put on a free festival in, in Mid City that I started post Katrina, and uh, you know, it takes a lot of partnerships, a lot of partnerships, a lot of phone calls, a lot of sales calls, uh, talking to community people, talking to uh, stakeholders in the community, knocking on doors. So I, I do a lot of fundraising, which is not uh, very sexy, if you will, uh, and, and that's not why I got in the business. I wanted to be in this. The glamorous side, right? <laughs> I got into it uh, managing artists, and um, about, ten, about 10 years ago, one of my first projects, uh, actually, uh, finally, we, we see some reward from this 10 years later. So um, persistence, you must stay persistent, because uh, my first project was Davis Rogan. I don't know if you're familiar with Davis, but he is the character on Treme, which, which aired last night, uh, that Steve Zahn is playing. Yeah. So, so, you know, 10 years later, here we are getting a reward from that. Yeah, yeah. So That's great. Yeah, I heard a clip of uh, Steve Zahn doing that, uh, doing his speech about uh, fundraising. His, his, his uh, I don't know if you saw it. But no, I didn't see he, that. He, uh, he kind of goes off in this wonderful way about, about how much he hates playlists. Great. Did it, by the way, did anybody see Treme last night? Just curious. Do we wow. have HBO here on campus? No, that's so sad. That's something for the new Dana Center. All right. Um, well, that's, that's great. So you started out in artist management. and then started out in artist management. Event yeah, I realized that artists aren't necessarily the most loyal people in the world. So <laughs> I started doing some small promotions and uh, 
lost a bunch of money doing that. Uh, I would go to some small venues, like, you know, the Republic was, you know, the Holland Wolf at that time, mm -hmm. and go there and, and try to promote small shows, like many of you are probably doing. But what I realize is that um, as an outside promoter, um, you take a lot of the risk, right? I mean, obviously, you know, Republic, Robert would have, you know, his staff as his risk for the night, but a prom promoter comes in, you know, you, you're going to book the talent and, and, and do all the marketing promotions. Robert doesn't necessarily have a ton of risk if you're coming in as an outside promoter. And he gets the bar, which is great. So I, I realized that as a small time promoter, it's like, well, I got to figure out how to get the bar because there was a lot of money in the bar. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so I would promote events at smaller venues around town and the bar would make out okay and I may lose because uh, I, I overpaid the band or, or there was just too much competition, which in New Orleans, there's just a ton of competition for music, right? I mean, any given night you can see 50, you can yeah. go to 50 venues, yeah. just about, and see live music. So uh, I changed my strategy and, and uh, looked at some models that I thought was working, which is French Quarter Fest and Wednesdays at the Square, where you're basically giving away the entertainment and, and trying to make money on, on the beverage sales and sponsorships and partnerships and things like that. Right. So uh, I changed my strategy after a few years of doing some small time promoting and always wanted to start a festival. And is that the bulk of your work now, or are you still involved in management? I just, I, yeah, uh, the festival consumes a lot of my time. Right. Um, I just let the Soul Rebels Brass Band go. I managed them for two years. Uh, they had an offer from a, a bigger agency out of New York, out of Boston, I'm sorry, and it was in their best interest to give it a shot. So right. I let those guys go, and we're on good terms. Um, I am starting up another project, but uh, it's a kid's project. Great. Trying something a little different awesome. as far as the management goes. A lot of money and kids. A lot less competition. Absolutely. <laughs> um, Greg, talk a little bit about community and Fatter Than Albert. Like what your, you know, what's the bulk of your business these days? Um, well, it's a lot of things. Uh, community records is, I mean, I definitely, I guess, got the ball rolling. But uh, Daniel Ray, uh, a graduate of last year, is the other half of it for sure. Um, and he and I work really closely together. He's in Fatter Than Albert, and uh, he also plays with Maddie Ruthless and I. So we, um, we work together to manage the label. Um, and basically the way that the label functions is it's a group of bands that we all tour with, that we're friends with, uh, basically music that we enjoy and we think other people would enjoy. And uh, the main, our main business model is giving away about 70, 75% of the MP3s for free. Right. In a lot of cases, we give away whole albums for free. Right. And then we do tangible records. We do vinyl and CDs, yeah. um, as well as like merchandise, t-shirts, sweaters, patches, stickers, all that stuff. So um, the label's main goal is kind of a long-term thing. Right. Uh, it's really functioned founded on the idea of that 80% of your business is going to come from 20% of your customers. Yeah. And our entire business model is making that 20% as happy as possible. Right. So if we can get somebody to order a vinyl once mm -hmm. and we send them a handwritten note and we give them mm -hmm. stickers and we like, you know, I mean, and it really is, I mean, we really <laughs> genuinely care about every single person that yeah. shows interest in our label. And uh, we feel that over time, it's going to become something really special right. and something that people genuinely feel like they're a part of. And that's like the whole idea of community records. Right. And we have, um, you know, we do things like we put out a zine. And the zine is, was written and composed entirely by people who are just interested in the label. And, you know, we, we check like every, every time somebody signs up for free music, we get an email and we find out. Uh, from that email, their name, where they're from, um, and they can't, they have a space to leave like comments on the label or their thoughts or whatever, and we respond to pretty much every single one of those and put them on our newsletter. Right. You know, so, so you, how many hours a week you do, you devote to that? Would you say? I mean, I'm I'm guessing it's a lot more than the 40-hour week for you. Uh, I, a lo a yeah. lot. Yeah. I, I, don't, I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's like when I'm awake. You yeah, know, yeah. Like, uh, I mean, I, and I'm assuming you're awake more than 40 hours a week. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it, what I, my point is that is that it's a pretty all-consuming. You know, you're living the life of a startup, right? It's, definitely, definitely. Yeah. And I mean, it's uh, it was more so a year ago than it is now. We're in like our second year of business, right. and then 
Um, I mean, also, I think a few people had said, or I, uh, my other friend and I run a coffee shop on Magazine Street. Right. So, like, that's, um, we're hope, I'm hoping that eventually, like, that can really get going, too, and be another financial foundation for myself. And I'm sure you find that there's, there are ways that one can serve the other. Right? Oh, yeah. I mean, we, we do, uh, like, it's a really small space, but we do shows. Yeah. We sell vinyl and CDs at the shop. Right. Uh, Where's the shop? Just plug it. It's, uh, it's next to Miss May's. Uh, so it's, it's a sandwich between Casamento's and Miss May's. And, Great. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So that's, right near my house, I'm going. Word. Word. <laughs> I say word, too. That's it's, the kind of guy I am. It's quite possibly <laughs> yeah. the best word. It is. It's, it's, a, it's a great word when you can just say word. Um, all right, so uh, this, that, that's great. I, I, um, Robert, just to close the loop, uh, I mean, um, you, your day-to-day -day at Republic is, is, I mean, Republic's basically dr um, uh, driven by live entertainment, right? So you yeah. consider yourself a promoter? Do you consider yourself a bar? Do you consider yourself, how do you see yourself and what do you, what do you see as the bulk of your business? So we actually started about the same time Jared did. We had right. the same realization that he did where he went into festivals. We tried to do one festival and it was just a bloody massacre. It was <laughs> awful. So it's one of the six or seven things that we did terribly. So we, we decided to go into bars. And so Republic now is the foundation of Lifestyle Revolution Group, which is basically an entertainment development company. Right. It's got two heads. One is the live music venue, yep. which we hope to maybe do 15 or 20 across the southeast right. in the next five or 10 years. And then the other is kind of um, lounges, restaurants, things that deeply saturate four or five different kind of cool emerging markets that have some sense of history and some artistic credibility. Right. Um, but Republic's very much the, the driver. It's the flagship. It's where right. we learned all of our lessons. I mean, it's almost like Lifestyle Revolution Group University. Right, right. Anybody who can kind of survive that gauntlet can do yeah. um, anything. And um, it's been a real organic growth. It's, we started as a record label. We right. released three albums, and we sold like 14 total between all three. So <laughs> yeah. then we evolved into promoters, and we, we did that for a little while. And then we evolved into a marketing and branding firm. Right. Our biggest client was an entertainment development company. They went out of business with Katrina, and so we slipped right into their shoes and started right. developing entertainment spaces ourselves. Right. Find a niche and fill it. Right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So. That's great. So, yeah, and a lot of it, obviously, trial and error, right? You, but, but the nice thing about that is, like, now you've got, you know, you have Republic, you know, you mentioned the, using it as a university. Right. You do all these things once, you don't have to do them again. Right. You know, once, you, once you crack it, you're cracked. Yeah. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to, I wonder what you were, what, what this place, or your back, in your case, Jared, your background, didn't prepare you for with regard to the business. We, you know, we speak in, in nice terms about what you were prepared for, but what, what didn't this place give you that you, that you wished you had? That's a hard question to answer. I mean, I, I'm an optimist inherently, so it's hard for me to look at that. You weren't surprised. There was nothing you were kind of caught off I guard by. I make it sound like it was ideal. And I know that's not the point of the question, but I have to be honest. I mean, between the classes that I had to take for business, right. between communication, economics, and the arts classes that I took, yeah. um, and, I, and I had some pretty challenging teachers. Right. Economics and finance was not an easy track. I don't know if many of you guys have Dr. Jerry Goolsby. I know oh, yeah. he's insanely and notoriously insane and yeah. difficult, but he's phenomenal. Yeah, and yeah. So no, um, I would anymore. encourage you guys to take the hardest teachers that are available here at Loyola because they're yeah. usually hard for a reason and um, you know I don't think there was a lot even the failures and there was a lot of failures and I don't say that in a self-defeating term I say that hopefully to empower you guys or encourage you guys not to get too upset if something doesn't work you just need to kind of keep trying things and keep yeah. figuring out till it works yeah. and, and um, almost every success story that I've ever seen in my life involves some failures at the onset well, so you know yeah I mean you know one in ten you're lucky yeah one in ten things works you're lucky. yeah so even in that regard um, you know, even in that regard, I found them to be incredibly supportive, and it was one of these things where you didn't really fail. You just have a lot of stuff yeah. from which to draw lessons and to make yeah. sure that you don't do those same things again, don't right. make the same mistakes. And so I don't think there was a lot, and I do think being in New Orleans is an advantage. I I'll say that maybe the thing that you guys alluded to earlier and that you can be lulled to sleep in New Orleans. It's yeah. a fantasy world. I love it. Obviously, you'll have to drag me out of here. I'll be the last person to leave. 
But it, there is a world beyond New Orleans, and it's very, very easy to become the king of New Orleans and ignore the rest of the world, right. and that can be a very unhealthy And if you thing. have a growth plan for the southeast, you're going to, you know, obviously you're going to have to kind of pull your head out of New Orleans, yeah. and, and I'm sure you're actively involved in that. You can lose your objectivity, yeah. and I think that happens in politics in New Orleans, where there's a lot of the corruption. I think that happens in almost everything. I mean, you can literally work 30 hours a week and be the king of New Orleans. Yeah. Why do anything else? Right, and that's a, right. Right. a challenge. Greg, how about you? Anything you were unprepared for? Yeah, I've been trying to rack my brain as to what thing I, I mean, didn't I, get from Loyola. Or has there something blindsided you, stuff, some, some aspect of what you do that caught you off guard? No, I, I mean, I honestly feel like I pretty much knew what I was getting into. And right. um, I knew that it is going to be a lot of grunt work and a lot of just pushing. Um, I can't help but bring this up because it really moved me. I mean, I, I feel really honored. I have to say, I feel really honored to be up here um, on the state. I mean, with people that obviously are, have their um, stuff together. And, um, <laughs> but I, I remember that. one of the things that I got from a forum, Harry Shear was here one time and he was saying he was poor till he was 35. Mm -hmm. He um, basically said, talent is good, luck is better, and persistence never fails. And you alluded to persistence earlier. Yeah. And, you know, and I, I just remember that really stuck with me. And uh, I know that what's going to get me through anything that I take on is just being persistent with yeah. it. And yeah. So, I mean, I feel like, you know, there's no, I don't, I don't feel like there is a such thing as being actually prepared when it comes to any form of entrepreneurship. It's right. just a matter of like, you know, being able to keep your head above water, and if you can keep doing that and keep doggy paddling until you get to the shore. Yeah, well, I know how to swim out of deep water when you get in it. You know, because yeah. you, know, you can get into deep stuff as well. You know what? I can think of one thing that maybe I wish that they would have done a better job teaching. You already me. had your chance. <laughs> <laughs> and hope they teach you guys is it? It just takes a spark. I remember when we started our record label, we were going to be sort of the positive version of cash money or no limit. We were going to make millions and millions of dollars, and that was success to us. And, right. and the reality of it is we have six venues now, and it started with a very small thing. And it started just like Jared's company, doing a couple of events and making a couple hundred dollars per event. Yeah. But it was winning. It was business, and you were making more money than you were losing. And that was success. And so I think it's really easy to look at people that might inspire you guys who are doing phenomenal things or world-changing things and to assume that it happened overnight. And the reality of right. it is, as long as you're putting points on the board in a small way yeah. and grows up, and I do think that's probably one thing, and I don't think they led us to believe differently, but I do think they probably could have done a little bit of a better job saying, listen, it just starts smally. Yeah, it's going to be small. It's, it's going to be small, be and then you're just going to grow gradually right. over time and keep getting better and doing more and more yeah. and more. And my, my grandfather was an old-time stockbroker. He always used to say, you can't go broke making a profit. Right. Like, you take your profit where you can get it. You take your profit when it's modest, even when it's modest. You, right. You don't go broke making a profit. Right. You know, it's, that's a great lesson. Jared, anything uh, <clears throat> blindside you? Well, um, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it happens every day. <laughs> um, I would say that one was cash flow right. and, and lack of cash flow, uh, trying to grow too fast. Right. Um, not really having the infrastructure as an entrepreneur, you're creating infrastructure for your organization. And uh, it's much easier to put yourself, in, to fit into an, an organization that already has some infrastructure in place. Right. Uh, boy, you just don't get prepared for that. I'll right, tell you. right. Uh, even, all the planning you can, you, you can do uh, still just doesn't prepare you for it, in my opinion. Um, and then manpower right. would be another one. Um, Find and help when you need it. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a great thing, I think, about starting something in college where there's a lot of, a lot of people interested in doing something, uh, a, a similar career path, if you will. You guys can work together and form some partnerships now. Right. And, and not everybody needs a ton of money to be involved also at this point in time. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, as Robert said, and as you just, uh, just said, winning is, is not losing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, and sometimes winning is just losing a few bucks, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, which, which happened plenty of times for me starting out. Yeah, modest losses. You guys, uh, I want to know if you guys engage in any kind of planning. I would imagine as an economics and finance major, Robert, you deal, you, you guys, you must do forecasting, planning, mark, you know, business planning, market planning. To be frank, we only started about nine months ago, uh -huh. and it has made all the difference in the world. I mean, we've literally gone from 
two venues that were sort of treading water to right. to six venues with the opportunities to do stuff across the country. It's and amazing what having it on it's, paper. It's unbelievable, does, and it's right? the difference between being purposeful and planning, and yeah. then just being reactive. And forever we were just reactive about exactly. things. Oh, we need to do this, or this band wants to play at Republic, so yeah. let's get it done. Or yeah. instead of planning intentionally to have these bands at these times and things like that. And um, so no, we were not good at it. We, we probably still aren't great at it, but we do do it now, and it has made all the difference in the that's, world. That's, that's great, because that's something that I'm particularly interested in talking to, to these kids about, you know, in, in, in our classes. You know, we, everybody, there's a lot of plans. Everybody's got to do at least a marketing plan. I know kids who are doing three right now. I know that, that everybody's got to do a business plan at some point. You know, I'm talking to my, to my people about management, about uh, strategic planning. It's just amazing what happens when you're forced to articulate something, put it Absolutely. on paper, yeah. and then you can change it. You can always change it, but you got to live right. with it for a little while, to figure it out. Greg, you guys plan? Form a little bit. Um, it's kind of like chunks at a time. Um, when I first started, I lined up two years of goals, and very little, very little in the way of financial planning, which is something that. Um, I'm still working on getting better at, you know, like that's something I'm definitely lacking in. I was, I was a marketing major and I had a minor in music business. So like all of my like inner in interest is like, unfortunately away from numbers. Right. Um, and it's more about just setting goals and doing my best to achieve those goals. I mean, right now I basically have 2010 planned out and right. I know that once I'm getting near the end of that, I'll start, hopefully if I'm still around, uh, you know, I'll, Plan out 2011. Right, right. So, how about your, how about D Ray, your partner? Do you have, do you get numbers out of him? Do, I mean, does he help? I mean, that it's way? basically, uh, it's every decision that's made, like we bounce it off of one another. Right. So it's, it's like we can kind of cross check ourselves, but I mean, as far as numbers go, I think we're kind of both on the same like ground as far as uh, just like we don't do enough of it. And that's something I, I am lacking a little bit, you know? And, right. um, but it hasn't, it hasn't made me feel like I'm about to sink or anything right. like that. I um, still feel pretty confident about where we're at. And Great. Jared, planning? How big a part? Yeah, plan every day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I do. I have a meeting tonight. I have a board meeting. Uh, you know, we have a, excuse me, pretty big, uh, uh, big risk coming up with putting on a free festival, you know, so right. while uh, there's so many, uh, so much attention to detail and, uh, you know, you got media buyers calling you every day, you know, hey, take out an ad in this program, take an ad in this, in this magazine, and, yeah. you know, I have a hard time telling people no, so I really need people to help me plan because I'd love to just spend it, um, yeah. <laughs> but I, I also teach entrepreneurship at Delgado, and uh, I'm really pushing my students to start planning now. Right. Um, and there's a couple of really good students that are doing some great research, and, and I get to learn a lot from it as well. So having students plan in my class helps me because I get something out of it. Yeah. Um, I'm always developing my plan. It's always changing. It's organic. Uh, it's never done. Um, right. Right. At least for an entrepreneur, you may be starting a right. You know, That's part of it. Enterprise. That, part of the things. One of the things you want students in this case to know also is like just because you write it, it's not like a paper and it's done. Right. It's not like a final paper. All of a sudden, it's, it's, it should be a living, these kinds of planning documents should be living documents. Absolutely. And, and they don't even have to be agonized over. You just have to get this stuff down, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, if you can come up with a mission and a vision statement at this point in your career, yeah. you know, that, that, that would just save you a lot of time. You yeah. know, figure out what's important to you. Yeah. You yeah. know, come up with a personal mission statement first. You know, where do you want to be in 10 years? That's, that's, ex that's exactly right. Uh, we, we're, we're, I can't believe it. We're running out of time, but um, I just want to throw out two choice—a a choice of two questions. You answer both, or answer one. It's up to you. Um, single piece of advice for somebody considering a startup. Somebody in this room considering a startup. If you have a single piece of advice, offer that. And uh, and if you or, or, or you can choose to answer the question, um, what's what's next year for you, and what do you see in five years? So you want to start, Robert? Uh, yeah, single piece of advice to anybody considering a startup is believe in it 100% and be passionate about it 100%. And that's a, it's a physical manifestation of something. It's, it's, it sounds like it's something you'd see on an inspirational poster on the wall of a dentist office. 
But the reality of it is, when you believe in something, you physically carry yourself with such conviction that everybody around you believes in it. So your employees, your potential customers, investors, partners, everybody starts to believe because you believe and you can physically see that as opposed to trying to represent something about which you're not passionate and in which you don't believe. Um, you can see that a mile away. So literally, that's one of the things that you can absolutely will to happen. You can't necessarily will cures to every disease yeah. known to man. You can't will being seven feet tall if you're six feet tall, but that is one thing that you can absolutely put your mind to and will to happen. Right. It's a physical manifestation. Right. It's a great point. You know, we talk a lot about uh, Guy Kawasaki's, uh, you know, uh, make meaning and do something. Right. Just do something. Start something. You know, take some, some small step. But that aspect of making meaning is something that you can believe in at that point. If you're making meaning, you can believe in it, and you, and you do carry yourself differently. It's, it's I point. mean, it's insane, and you, you guys have probably seen it a million times. It's like, well, you know, you're going to do a live music festival, there's 10 live, that's, in, that's insane, you know? Yeah. You've got to be out of your mind, you're batshit, what are you doing? And then you still believe in it, and then they start believing in it as you believe in it, and it's like, holy shit, he's doing this music festival, and it's yeah. awesome, yeah. you know? And, and yeah. these are the same people that thought you were insane. And, and it, it literally happens time and time again. All guy who impacts you guys every single day, Steve Jobs. I mean, he's been insane probably ten times in his yeah. life. Yeah. Taking on Bill Gates, yeah. trying to make money on music yeah. in in two thousand and yep. you know, so just believe in it, guys. Yeah, that's great. Greg? I feel you read my brain almost as far <laughs> as like I mean, it really is just, you have to, or at least for me, in my experience, it's, it's something that I found that I was really passionate about and I held on to. And I mean, I feel like a, a good example of what I've been through. I remember my senior year, um, my brother, who's eight years my elder, has like, any time I've ever had any sort of crisis or, I mean, he's been my mentor my entire life. And I remember calling him and telling him like, you know, it was March before May of graduation and I was like, I'm gonna do this label. And he was like, no, nah, man, like, you know, you have this marketing degree, you have a good GPA, like, go make money first, spend a few years doing that, and then do the label. And I'm like, no, like, I have to do this now. And, at, you know, when I was talking to him, it was really hard. It was, like, yeah. really hard to say, this is what I want to do. I don't want to worry about, like, I know I could go be making thousands of dollars, like, but it's not, that's not what it is for me. And, um I don't know. I'm I'm as happy as could be. I mean, yeah. I'm as busy as could be too. But I I just feel like every day, like I wake up with purpose, and like that's yeah. what. Yeah, you do. You do something you love. Is. You never work a day in your life, right? I mean, I, I mean, really, like, I mean, it's it's tough sometimes. I feel like I'm grinding my head against the concrete, but yeah. I love it. Like, yeah. Yeah. it's uh, I know one day it's going to be something really good. Yeah, that's a very close second. Get started now. Yeah. Don't worry about getting a real that's job, a making money about. first, all yeah. that stuff. Get started now. The learning and the experience that you'll have yeah. on the job is going to yeah. be invaluable. It's so much more important than law school or graduate school or a job. And the reality of it is I see it time and time again. People get real jobs, yeah. and they start making real money, and then they don't want to walk away. Happy. Exactly. Like, None of them are oh, happy, man, but they don't want to walk away. You know, I got this away. great Xbox. Like, <laughs> right, exactly. They have an Xbox yeah. and an Audi, and they don't want to walk away and yeah. do their own thing. So they're Buying miserable. stuff is happiness. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And, I can't help, but you did ask what's going on this year, but I have to plug what's going on this weekend, the Block Party Festival. Please come out if y'all can. Uh, it's this Saturday at the Big Top. Uh, 20 bands, nine of them are on community records. We're bringing in bands from all across the country. Um, it's like we're blocking off the street, so we'll have a stage outside and a stage inside. Um, I'll, I have flyers afterwards. It's 15 bucks or uh, 12 if you bring a donation of food or clothing for the New Orleans mission. Word. So, Word. That's great. Jared. Uh, I guess I have a few things I can say. I'm trying to get back to your question. Yeah, yeah. Which was? <laughs> uh, well, you know, either single piece of advice for somebody right. looking to start up, you know, considering a startup. Yeah. I mean, or would you even consider a startup at this point? You know, who, maybe you've got to be crazy to start up, to start a Absolutely business. Absolutely right crazy, yeah. yeah. Um, I would say keep your eye on the ball and find something that you do really well and do that thing, whatever that thing is, and do that well. Uh, some mistakes I made was trying to do too much at once. Uh, if I had to do it over again, I would try to focus and hone in on one thing and try to become real successful at doing that first and then try to diversify uh, and, and, do, and get into some other things. Um, 
also, you asked me where I wanted to be in five or ten years. Oh, yeah, like next year or five years from now. Well, you know, and it's something that you guys can do now is, and this is kind of amazing, right? But uh, I'm getting ready to start a new project in, in the kids' world, uh, which I'm excited about. And um, I'm just really finding out who I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> ten years into it, I mean, I'm doing research, I'm planning, I'm looking at competition, and I'm just realizing I found this company that's like, wow. This is who I want to be when I grow up, you know, right, as, right. A, as an enterprise. Right. And so if you guys can do that research now and figure out who it is that, that you're going after and try to emulate them if they're, if they're uh, the leader in the marketplace, uh, do that research now while you have time. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. There's, uh, there's, there's that um, management author, Jim Collins, who talks about, you know, the hedgehog concept, you know, the thing. What, you know, where your passion is, where, you know, what you do better than anyone else. And you know where the money is, and if you can if you can merge those circles into an overlap, you know that that overlap is where you guys live, and you know you're you're so fortunate to be in that position, and that's where I hope that we can encourage and kind of nudge everyone in this room to find that same kind of that same area of overlap. You know, what is it you really care about? Where's the meaning for you? You know, where's where's a place you can make some money, and you know or, or find some money. And you know, and, and what can you do that nobody else can do, you know? And and that's a it's a worthy um, set of questions to answer for yourselves. And, and to and to uh, and you're lucky you have people in your community like these guys who you can who you can reach out to. I know that uh, that uh, many of you will come up to the uh, stage after after we're done here and, and and get contact information. And I encourage you to do that. Um, you should know these people. They're in your community, and. Um, uh, you need them as much as they need you, as much as you need them, as much as they need you. So, um, thank you very much, you guys. Thank, thank you. you for the, thank you. Thank you guys for having me. All righty. Well, that that wraps us up. So we'll see you next week, everybody. Thanks, Thanks guys.